Ahoy, explorers of flight. Welcome aboard the sustainability ship of the line, where our journey is not just across the endless blue, but deep into the essence of sustaining our very selves. Today, we're charting a course toward true sustainability, not just the ecological sort. More importantly, about finding sustainability in every dimension of our life so we can find harmony, happiness, and peace. This is real, honest navigation using science, my pirate wisdom, and a dash of rogue wit to guide our ship. Hoist the sails, time for our life journey. Hey, my name is Greg. I'm a master coach helping people, teams, and organizations to know themselves, design their future selves, and become their future selves. I'm here to help you live a life where you have control. When we hear the word sustainability, our minds often leap to green forests and clean oceans. But true sustainability goes way beyond saving the planet. It's about creating a lifestyle that ensures we not only survive, but thrive. Mentally, physically, and emotionally long into the future. Think of it as the sustainability ship. Every part must work in harmony to keep us sailing smoothly. This is where nature comes into play. Our nature, what is provided, what is existing within ourselves, and also nature as the environment around us. To be sustainable, we must know our nature, design our future self and actions to support and expand on our nature, to eventually become the best that nature has provided us. All of that in equilibrium with the natural environment around us. This journey is framed by what I call the Spire for SPIRE. Each element represents a vital part of our ship and each will be explored in depth as we navigate through this video. SPIRE stands for spiritual, physical, intellectual, relational, and emotional well-being. It's a framework that was created by the Happiness Studies Academy, and you can find a lot more about this in this video here. For each one of those dimensions, we will use the mental model of knowing, designing, and becoming. Let's start with knowing. It's about understanding your current state in each of these areas. How healthy are your relationships? What's your physical condition? How rich is your intellectual life? Are you emotionally balanced? How deep are your spiritual roots? Next, we design. This isn't about drawing blueprints. It's about crafting a life strategy that aligns and fulfills your nature. It's setting goals, making plans, and sometimes redesigning entirely to ensure that you're not just drifting through life, but steering confidently towards your desired destination. And finally, becoming. This is where the magic happens. It's a transformation into the person who not only dreams of a balanced life, but lives it every day. It's about adopting practices that deliver on your design. Starting with spiritual. Our spiritual compass is not about religion or rituals. It's about the core of your spirit, that quiet inner voice that helps steer your life. Knowing and understanding your spiritual compass starts with recognizing what gives your life meaning and direction, your purpose. These are the values, beliefs, motivations that guide you through both stormy seas and calm waters. And you can check this coaching video to discover them if you're interested. Designing your spiritual practices might include daily reflection moments, such as meditation, journaling, or just a quiet walk in nature, or maybe just time off your phone. It is also understanding what spirituality means for you. For me, it's having a purpose in life and generally finding contentment, happiness. For others, it might be about feeling aligned with their God, their religious practice. Those designs are ways to calibrate your compass, ensuring you are headed where you intend to go. Becoming spiritually aligned means embedding these practices into your life until they are not just habits, but integral parts of who you are. It's about reducing the gap between where you are to where you want to be. For me, a way of doing that was writing my life purpose back in 2017, and then starting to act to get closer to what it really meant to live this life purpose. It's about letting that inner compass guide you naturally, driven by a deep and fulfilling desire to follow your true path. Coaching question. What do you know about your spirituality? What do you want to design for your spiritual life? How do you act to become that spiritual person? You like this video so far? Then you know what to do. Subscribe and put the notifications on if you want more content like this every week. And check out all the links, all the videos in the description that talk about the same concept.
The physical hull is a very structure that keeps our ship robust and seaworthy. Just like a ship's hull, our bodies protect and support us, carrying us through life's voyages. Knowing and understanding your physical hull involves recognizing how your bodily health impacts every aspect of your life. It's about acknowledging that without a sound body, navigating through other areas of life become very challenging. It is also about understanding how your body works, whether it is about nutrition, type of exercise, when it's best to sleep, what are your natural talents, weaknesses, etc. For example, to get to know my body better, I did an extensive DNA test. I did some body composition analysis tests, also some blood, urine, functional tests, as well as cognitive tests. All of this is just data, but helpful data that leads to design. When you design, you do it with care, precision, and regular maintenance. Incorporate activities that strengthen and rejuvenate your body, whether it's through exercise, proper nutrition, or sufficient rest. And also don't forget your body is your brain, so prepare exercises to help your brain rest and rejuvenate. Telling you about all the designs that I've done for my physical whole would take another video entirely. But there is one element that I would like to outline as underrated and massively important, and that's nutrition. What you eat is what you are. So if you only focus on one thing, this is it. Becoming one with your physical health means these practices aren't just tasks on your to-do list. They become part of your daily habits of who you are. It's about making choices that consistently support physical health and recognizing that these choices influence your overall resilience and sustainability. Much more on how to create powerful habits right there. Coaching question. How are you maintaining your health? How would you address any of the leaks that you know need to be addressed? As we navigate through life's seas, our intellectual map is what guides us. It's not just any map. It's a living document constantly updated with new knowledge and insight. Much like the charts used by sailors to find the best routes through uncharted waters. Knowing your intellectual map involves recognizing the current state of your knowledge and curiosity. It's about asking yourself where you seek more enlightenment and where your knowledge can be deepened and broadened. It also links to your purpose. Ask yourself first, why do I want this knowledge? How will I use it to further my purpose or other elements of my spire? Design your intellectual growth by setting goals for learning and exploration. When I design my intellectual growth paths, I look at both purpose aspects and also simply curiosity and fun. For instance, I'm doing a master coach training this year to further enhance the impact I can have on people or organizations. And that's part of my purpose. At the same time, I'm learning some Japanese and Thai because I like learning languages. And I'm thinking about doing a pastry cooking class because I just love pastries. Becoming an intellectual explorer means integrating this pursuit of knowledge into your daily life, making it as routine as navigating by the stars. It's about allowing your curiosity to lead your decisions and interactions, continually expanding your understanding of the world. Just as the ship's crew works together to navigate the vast seas, our relationships shape and steer our personal and professional lives. And according to a famous study, they are also the secret to a long, happy, and fulfilled life. Understanding your relational crew involves assessing the strengths and health of your connections. It's recognizing the roles that friends, family, colleagues, and even acquaintances play in your life's journey. Are these relationships pushing you forward or are they holding you back? Once again, make sure that you link this to all the other spire elements. Your relationship can support your spiritual life, your physical life, your intellectual life, your, your relation with others, and your emotional life. Design your relational interactions like a skilled captain who knows the value of every crew member. This means cultivating deeper connections, resolving conflicts wisely, and ensuring that communication channels are open and effective. It's about being intentional in how you relate to others, fostering relationships that are mutually supportive and beneficial. Becoming integrated with your relational crew means these connections are not just part of your social circle, but are woven into the very fabric of your daily life. They become your support network, your sounding board, and your cheerleaders. As a crew you surround yourself with needs to represent the person you want to become, not a person from your past or present. Coaching question. How are you contributing to your relational crew? Are you as supportive as you are supported? 
or is it time to steer this relationship to different waters? The emotional sails are what catch the wind and propel our ship forward. And similarly, our emotions drive our actions and reactions, fueling our journeys through life. Knowing and understanding your emotional sails means acknowledging and recognizing your feelings. It's about being aware of how your emotions influence your decisions and interactions. Are your emotions helping you sail smoothly or is it tossing you about like in a stormy sea? Design your emotional landscape like a good captain deciding which sails will need to be used when and how much will they unfurl. These practices help you maintain control and stability no matter what emotional winds you encounter. Becoming adept with your emotional selves doesn't mean suppressing your feelings, but rather learning how to navigate them effectively. This could involve techniques like mindfulness, emotional regulation exercises, counseling, coaching, or therapy. It's about integrating emotional wisdom into your lives so that you can face any challenge with resilience and grace. If you want to get a much deeper understanding of your emotion, then check this out. Coaching question. How well do you manage your emotional sails? What adjustments do you need to make to catch the winds of joy and contentment? It's all very nice to keep looking at our wonderful ship, but there is also an ocean to deal with. This ocean represents the world around us, both the natural environment and the societal landscape we navigate daily. It's a world of nature and a world of humans. Knowing the ecosystem ocean means recognizing our place within a larger context. It's about seeing how our actions impact our surroundings and in turn how these surroundings influence us. It means what you consume from the ecosystem, what you produce and give back to the ecosystem. Whether we're talking about people, ideas, knowledge, material goods or the raw nature, are we contributing to the health of this ecosystem or are we depleting its resources? This is in a way your ship's ledger about how you interact with the ocean. Design your interactions with the ecosystem with care and responsibility. This involves choosing sustainable practices that support your and others' people's spires, when we talk about the human element. And yes, it is also designing sustainable practices about environmental health. Whether it's reducing waste, supporting fair trade, or engaging in community service, each action shapes the health of the ecosystem. Degrading our environment is a bit like smoking. It is only slowly damaging you, but it certainly is. Damaging our environment means damaging ourselves in the long run. Or maybe not so long. Also, just a thought. The less you consume, the less you spend. The more your income is sustainable for your lifestyle for many more years. We currently consume about 1.5 planet worth of resources. I think we all know that's not what you could call sustainable. Becoming a steward of this ecosystem ocean means integrating sustainability into your lifestyle. It's about making choices that ensure the well-being of people around you and future generations and protecting the diverse life forms with which we share the planet. Coaching question. In what ways are you contributing to the sustainability of your ecosystem ocean? What are the actions that you can take to help preserve the balance? Sustainability is very much about deciding the impact you want to have in the world. Jane Goodall summarized it very well when she said, what you do makes a difference and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. So be the change you want to see in the world. Hey, did I forget something essential here? What about money? If you have worked on all the spire elements with a knowing, designing, becoming framework, then by now I would guess that you consider money as a mean and not an end. And if you have reached a sustainable level for all aspects of your fire in your life, then you probably do not need that much money. But if you still feel insecure and unsure about your money, then check out my playlist on personal finance. Plenty there to ease your mind.